y'all welcome back to my channel today we are going to do a slow cooker beef ramen um, I know I've done several little ramen dishes for you I always try to not try to replicate every single thing that we do but I do try to come up with if I if I have to then I'll just try to make it differently somehow but anyway so what we need to do is we're gonna have to get some prep work done first and then we can add everything to the crock pot so the first thing I want to do is move this out of the way and show you my chicken broth. You're going to need about a can of chicken broth. I went ahead and poured that in. We are going to need, I'm sorry, this is not the right measure. I'm just going to add it. We need about a half a cup of soy sauce and we're going to pour that in. We're going to mix it with our chicken broth. And I always use low sodium, just that way I'm not adding too much salt, if that makes sense. I'm trying to make sure that's enough, okay? And instead of some chopped garlic and stuff like that, we're going to just use our powder. And I needed to get rid of some. So we'll put some in there, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. You're gonna whisk that together, okay? And we need about two tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm not even gonna pack it. I'm just gonna put some heaping tablespoons in there. All right, I mixed all that together. So that was our garlic, soy sauce, brown sugar, and our chicken stock, okay? Now, you will have to do a little bit more prep work as well. You'll need to go ahead and cook your ground beef and drain it. And that's exactly what I've already done. And uh, let's see what else. We also have to chop up some vegetables. You're going to chop up some green onions and some bell pepper. And I also, you have to have these kind of carrots, matchstick carrots. But I just bought mine at Walmart so I wouldn't have to do all that cutting. So, go ahead and get your crock pot, add your ground beef, and then we're going to add our vegetables. So that was matchstick carrots, some sliced bell pepper, and some chopped green onion. And I'll have all the measurements below. We're just going to mix all this up together and get ready for a dinner in just a few hours, which will be heavenly. I won't have to continuously cook all day. They can do it all by itself. And then you're going to take your liquid mixture and you're going to go ahead and pour it in. Okay. And you can just stir it up a little bit. All right. So that's it. Uh, the ramen comes later. <coughs> the ramen will come later. We'll add that in the last 30 minutes of cooking. So this needs to cook on low four to six hours. Um, and then we'll be ready to add the ramen. And then we'll come back and I'll show you that process as well. See you back here in a few. Okay, y'all. So we come to the end of the day. It's about a half hour before I need to serve this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ramen in. I'm not going to break it up or anything. I guess you probably could. But you know what? I'm, I probably am going to break it up because... It's going to be hard to stir this. That's very hot. It's going to be hard to stir it around if it isn't. All right. There we go. So you can just discard the packets. You just needed the noodles anyway. I'm going to stir some of this in here. Try to cover it the best you can. And you're going to have to continuously stir it for the next half hour until it is done. All right, so as soon as it's done, I will come back and we'll look at the finished product. Let it continue to cook. Like I said, continue stirring and it should only take about half an hour. Okay, y'all. So I have stirred this around the last half hour. I just come back here every five to seven minutes and just stir 
So it's done and it's ready to serve. Um, one thing that I want to add that's not in the recipe is some sesame seed oil. Um, this will give it a little bit more of an authentic Asian flavor, in my opinion. You don't have to add it, but it does take everything up a notch. So if I were you, it's something that I would invest in. Um, it's, a, it's only a few dollars, anywhere from two to four dollars a bottle, I don't remember. I keep it in the fridge. A little goes a long way. I don't use too much of it. Um, you will have to keep it in the fridge so that it won't go rancid, um, but it does help give it that Asian flavor that everybody's you know accustomed to. But um, it's a really cheap meal, like always, and on budget, and it costs, it's a $5 meal for sure. Okay, y'all. Hey, y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to work on a really, really, really easy crock pot recipe. Uh, it's called Super Pork Chops, and really all it is is a can of chicken and rice soup and some pork chops. But it's got a little bit of prep work to go with it. So, I got a pork loin. I always buy pork loins. That's what I do. Um, I make my pork chops out of that or anything that I need pork for. Then that way I have plenty of meat to do whatever. And they're cheap. Uh, they have just a little bit of fat on them. So it's just enough to where they're not the most dry pork chop ever. So as you can see, these are pretty thick that I cut. Um, but you don't have to cut them that thick. Close to an inch would be perfect. So you need to dredge them first. We're gonna dredge them in some flour and fry them first before we put them in the crock pot to finish out cooking. Um, you need some all-purpose flour, some seasoned salt, garlic powder, dry mustard, and some pepper. And then some oil to fry them in. And all you're gonna do is just brown them on each side. They could be completely in you know, totally really, really dark brown, or they can just be lightly brown, it doesn't matter. They're gonna finish cooking in the crock pot. So, I'm probably gonna go ahead and cut up this whole um, pork loin. The recipe only calls for six pork chops, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cook all these in there. Um, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. About 11 or 12 is how much the loin that I bought to make up, and I think I bought a almost four pounds pork loin. And the whole thing cost me a little under seven dollars. It was a dollar eighty nine a pound. So these are a really cheap. And if you look at them, they're not too fatty. They have just enough marbling that you know they make great. You can put them on the grill. You can do anything with them. They're very versatile. And I suggest, you know, if you're running low on funds, this will probably be the way to go. And you could possibly, I mean, I've always been able to get like two meals at least out of this for my big family. So some of you out there could probably get more. Uh, I bought mine at Aldi's, but uh, Walmart sells it too. So you can, you should be able to find some and you should be able to, it's affordable. And, and it's called half pork loin, not tenderloin. This is going to be bigger than that. Tenderloin is more, more of a leaner cut. All right, so I'm going to do this in batches. And like I said, I'm going to do the whole almost four pound package. And right now I'm just trying to just brown the sides. We're, we're gonna braise it a little bit. Not too much, just lightly. And then I'm gonna get them set up in the crock pot for you. It's a really simple recipe, not much to it. So this should be very affordable. Chicken and rice soup, the only person, the only person, the only brand I know of that makes it's Campbell's. So that's all you need. The rest of these things should already be in your pantry. 
and then you need your pork loin or pork chops. You could do pork chops. You don't have to get a pork loin to do this. It's better if it's boneless though. All right, I'll be back with you when we move on to the crock pot portion. Okay, y'all, so I got my crock pot sprayed a little bit just because, just to help. And I'm gonna put my pork chops in here. One of them I cut way too thick. But hopefully it'll sit in here long enough it'll cook okay and the other step is a chicken and rice soup and that's it now i'm gonna keep an eye on this because i feel like it needs more liquid but i'm not gonna put it in we're just gonna see how it does uh if i do put anything else in there it'd be a little bit of chicken broth but we're gonna see how this goes and so I'm gonna watch it. You need to cook it on low for six hours and then it should be ready to serve. I'll see y'all back here this afternoon. Okay, y'all, so this is the finished product. Um, it, do, it took six hours, just like I said it would. Um, and I made some homemade biscuits and then just kind of drizzled what little bit of juice and everything that was in there with the rice and everything over top of the biscuits. But y'all have to do it that way at all. Um, and here are the pork chops. So everything turned out great. Um, it's gonna be a very filling dinner, a very f flavorful dinner, and it only took two ingredients. All right, and I'll see y'all next time.